Hi kids, welcome back. Welcome to another Awana lesson. We're doing lesson 4.2. So glad to see you back. I look maybe a little different, mostly because I'm not. My sister's helped us. My sister helped us uh, for the last couple of lessons. So thank you, Mrs. Elisa, for looking after this uh, for our lessons. But uh, I'm glad to be back with less hair this time. So good to see you. And I don't have my shirt, so I apologize, for boys and girls. But uh, the lesson is going to be just as wonderful by God's grace. So we thank you for being back with us in another lesson. Remember, remember, boys and girls, to do your memory verses and your sections and let us know when you do your progress so that we can keep track and then acknowledge your progress during our awards night. So always remember, tell your parents of your progress in your book and then we can keep track. Another thing too is remember that the Grand Prix is coming up. So check out the, the emails that you get to ask your parents when you get those emails to get working on your cars just as well. And for a want to go also to do your, if you get your bag a little, little, a little later on to put those little, <clears throat> little bit of help that you can, uh, and anything will be greatly appreciated. So thank you boys and girls. Thank you parents and leaders for your time. Let's pray. Our lesson today is going to be Grace and Law, like I said, 4.2. So there's a lot to say, uh, not too much time to cover it all. So we're just going to go over it a, a little bit and then you guys can take a look further in your small group this week. So let's pray and, and ask God to be with us. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much, Lord, that you are with us tonight to open up your word, that we are Holy Bible, so we can learn it, we can study it, open up our heart and prepare our minds also to learn from it. What it is that you want to tell me, what it is that you want to tell us, Lord, uh, tonight during the, uh, today during the lesson and in your Bible and in Scripture, and help me, Lord, to understand what it is that, uh, that it's saying to all of us, Lord, that we can learn it, and learn more about you, Lord Jesus, and our love will grow more and more towards you. Every time I read, every time I pray, every time I worship, my love for you may grow more and more and more. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. <clears throat> now, boys and girls, you probably heard, let's start with the law. So it's grace and law. So let's start a little bit with the law. You probably heard of the Ten Commandments, right? So obviously there's ten that were given to Moses a long time ago. God wrote them with his own hand in the tablets, so like in the, in the stone. But because of what Moses saw when he was coming down from the mountain, and he was very upset with the people, very angry, he reacted, and in his reaction, his anger, he broke those, uh, those tablets, and so he had to write them. But they were still there, so there were ten, ten commandments, and we know them. You'll find them in Exodus chapter twenty. So they're they're there. We can read them. But did you know, boys and girls, that there were just not, that there weren't just those ten commandments. There were more. So we know that there are over six hundred of them. So the 10 are the most famous ones, and then we have all the others, which hundreds of them. It's over 600 of them. So you can almost ima you can imagine how difficult it must be for a person to do over 600 things right and not make a mistake. So Because that's what keeping the law meant. It's doing all those 600 points perfectly all the time, every day, for the rest of your life without breaking any of them. So you couldn't do like 599 or whatever number it was, right? You have to do all of them. So that's pretty much impossible to do all of them. And because God knows that that's exactly what happens, is that we're not able to be, let's put it this way, we're not able to get to heaven by keeping all those laws. If we had to keep them all, then no one would be able to succeed because we weren't be able to do them, right? But what happened was there was one person who was able to do that. Not no one before him and no one after him. He was able to keep them all, all the time from a very young age to the end, to the time where God picked them up when he passed away, right? And this is Jesus. And we know he passed away. He gave his life for us, but then he resurrected on the third day. So all those things that he had to keep, all the law, he was perfect. He kept them perfectly. Now, the reason why he had to keep them perfectly was because if he didn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have been able to give his life for us. And he did. He gave his life for us so that we would now be able to get to heaven without having the need to keep all those laws. So the laws, the law didn't open up our door to heaven. Let's put it that way. So keeping of the law didn't open or close the door to heaven. We were now given the opportunity by God's grace and love, like we saw last week, to be able to get to heaven by trusting Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And we are converted and we start a new life and trusting the Lord. And by reading the Bible, we are, well, that's the way that we are able to learn about the law. We're able to learn about what it said in the, in the beginning. So that's not wrong. We can learn about the law. We can read the laws. It's wonderful. But then we know that we live by grace. So if you have your Bible with you, I have my Bible right here. Actually, yeah. 
<clears throat> if you can turn to the book of Romans, let's go to the book of Romans. Again, you can pause the video at any time. Let's go to the book of Romans, and we learn in Romans 3, or chapter 3, verse 10, that no one, like we said, was able, has been able to keep all of the laws perfectly. No one was able to. Maybe keep a few of them, a couple of, you know, maybe there's years where some of them are easier, some of them are more difficult, but to keep them all, it's it's impossible. So Romans chapter 3, verse 10 says, if you follow along, it says, As it is written, no one is righteous, no, not one. So no one is righteous, and no one has ever kept everything perfectly, not not one single person. Because it's almost like, think of it as a chain. So if you have a chain with you, if you've seen a chain, there's the links on the chain. So if you were to pull one, all the other ones come along with it, right? So it's almost like they're all together. So by breaking one law, all of them collapse. Or if you played, maybe if you made a tower with blocks, if you take one, that if you, we're focusing on the bottom one. If you take one, it all collapses, right? It's all part of one. It all makes one thing. So we had to keep them all together, all intact, without moving one or the other, where all of them will be will be falling along, like little dominoes. So if you move one, and all they all collapse one after the other, right? So then we have to make sure that all were perfectly still, and nobody was able to do that except Jesus. So Jesus was perfect. The Lord Jesus was perfect. So when he was here on earth, he kept all the law perfectly. And he was the only one who could do that so that he would be able to take on the punishment for sin so that we wouldn't have to take on that punishment. As the Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And he gave his life for us so that we wouldn't have to be away from the Lord, so that we wouldn't fall short of the glory of God, which we did. And the punishment for sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He was the one who took all of that and on his shoulders, on in his life, and he died on the cross for us so that we won't have to follow those things, so that we now live by grace. Now, does that not that doesn't mean that now we can do whatever we want because that we now live by grace and not the law. So that means we doesn't mean that we live without any rules. It, they're necessary. And God tells us in the Bible, we read our Bible, and then the more that we read our Bible, the more that we learn about God, the more we learn about ourselves, and then we learn about how God wants us to live, right? And then you might, boys and girls, you might remember a time or maybe later on you, you come to a time where you're thinking, hmm, that's not good. I shouldn't do that. Or whatever that person, my friend is doing, I don't want to take part in that. That's not right. Now, that particular thing, it doesn't mean, oh, I have to look for it in the Bible. It's right here. Oh, you shouldn't do that. It's not there, perhaps. But I know that as I walk in with God and God is with me and His Holy Spirit helps me, then I'm able to discern, which is a word to say, to to make sure I know the difference between one thing and another. So I can tell that that's not something that God, that pleases the Lord, that pleases God. So I shouldn't do that. That's that's wrong. Maybe even my parents haven't told me that that's wrong yet. But I know, I have a feeling in my heart, I feel inside of me that I shouldn't be doing that. So whenever you have that sort of feeling, then you should be, you know, hmm, alarm bells go off. Maybe I shouldn't be doing that. And if you have a chance, you can tell your parents, ask them you know, to make sure that that's exactly what it is. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing that. And always be trustworthy, right? You always be open with mom and dad and tell them because I'm sure they'll be happy to hear you, right? Just let them know just to double check. Maybe they'll say, oh, no, don't worry. That's not that's not wrong. Then you can do it and then you go ahead. But for the most part, if you feel like that, then uh, you have to trust that, right? that the Holy Spirit is telling us and is teaching us. And as we walk with God, going to church and reading our Bible and praying and having that communication and that relationship with God, then those things will be able to keep us from sin, right? Okay. <clears throat> so let's go to chapter uh, 5, verse 21. Chapter 5, this is still Romans, sorry. Romans chapter 5, verse 21. <clears throat> And it says this, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let's read that again. So that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what this is telling us is that righteousness... And if you look in your book, you'll see that righteous, it says perfectly good, always doing what God says is right. So these righteousness, or righteous, is going to keep us in doing what is right. And it says leading us to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
because it's all through Jesus. Remember, he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father, so that is eternal life, except through Jesus. Because boys and girls, you might you might think about this, because there might be people who say, well, I mean, I don't believe in God, or I don't go to church, I don't read my Bible, so I don't know what pleases God, but I still, you know, I still do what's right. I don't steal things, I don't hurt people. I try to do what is good, I give money to, to different charities, and I, I do that, you know, I help people, I smile, I give them hugs, and stuff like that, so I'm a good person, they might think I'm a good person. But remember this verse all the time, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one gets to the Father except through Him. So that's great, it's wonderful that people are very generous, that people are doing what they think is good and correct, okay, so that's wonderful, but that that doesn't get us to heaven it's through lord through our the lord jesus christ for what he did for us so we get to a point in our lives that we were able to pray and give our life to the lord and take and have him be our leader have him be our guide and have him give our all to him so that we know we can trust in god and through the holy spirit that they're going to lead us into righteousness and into heaven right so we know that for a fact because that's what jesus came to do so we don't have to be away from him anymore we now have a clear path towards Jesus and towards towards heaven, right? And in, in eternal life, it's, it says right here in chapter 5, verse 21, at the very end, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we have that goal, and the way to it is leading through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So if you know somebody who, uh, who says that, you can pray for them. You can pray for them, you know, if they already have a, you know, a kind heart, they're kind, they're gentle people, they, they do what is right. But they still don't know God and they still don't have Lord, the Lord Jesus as their Savior. Then let's pray for them. Pray for them. Then one day you'll be able to share the gospel with them. And God touches their heart and they'll be able to understand and now have that. It's almost like the Bible says like a veil lifted. And you can see clearly now and say, yes, yes, I understand that even though I'm doing good things, we're still sinners, right? So they still need to ask Jesus to, be, to forgive them of their sins. So boys and girls, just to leave you with that, think about that for a second. Think about how difficult it is to keep the law. Think about how, how to, such a wonderful thing that Jesus did for us, that even though he knew we couldn't fulfill all those things, he gave his life for us so that we wouldn't have that as a stumbling block. So we wouldn't like go up and to hit a wall and say, oh no, I can't. I, I, can, you, can you imagine how nervous you would be if you had to fulfill all 600 or more than 600 laws all the time perfectly without, you know, missing one ever in your life because if you did you wouldn't be able to get to heaven i would be really stressed i would be very very stressed and i wouldn't be able to live freely i wouldn't i, I don't know what it'd be like i don't think it would be nice but see but now i know lord jesus pray the price for my sins he is at the right hand of god and whenever i do happen to stumble and sin i know i can trust my lord jesus and i come to him in my knees and i ask him to forgive me to lead me in the way of righteousness and good and then, then he, I know, asked the Father, and then I'll, I'll just wait on his mercy. And I know I'll have forgiveness in our Lord Jesus. So this way I have the freedom and I can live peacefully and calmly knowing that, that I have a place prepared for me in heaven. So that makes it a much, much better way, right? That I know the Lord Jesus is there with me. I'm on his side and he's on my side. Let's pray and ask God uh, to, to sink that in for us. Dear Heavenly Father, come together tonight in the name of Jesus, today in the name of Jesus Christ, to thank you, Lord, so much for another wonderful day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you knew or you know your creation, you know our hearts, you know our lives. You know that it would be pretty much, it is impossible to keep them all, but you did it, Lord Jesus. One for all, Lord Jesus. You did it all for all of us, Lord. You did everything for us. You gave everything for us. You gave your place up in heaven for a little bit to be down here with us to take the, the punishment for our sins. And now we know you're back in heaven at the right hand of God, your Father, our Father. So we thank you for these wonderful promises of eternal life and to be with you forever and ever. And I ask for the boys and girls and everybody watching, Lord, that if we ever stumble and sin, that we can come to you and trust that you will be able to forgive us because that's what you promised us. We can um, repent of our sins, mention them in prayer, and we know we can find that forgiveness from you. So we thank you for this wonderful, wonderful blessing. It's such a blessing, Lord, that we can't even imagine how wonderful it is, how important it is. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all these beautiful things. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. Take care. We'll see you uh, Thursday. Take care. Bye.